Nursery one, those pupils using Pesetzer's book two, those that I'm holding in my hand. So that's a lesson term two, scheme of work. So first of all, what they are supposed to do in the week ended, for last week when school resumed, for those who resumed school January 6, and if you are just resuming too, we are still well in line with this uh, lesson presentation. So you have to revise first time's work with your pupils, making use of different uh, teaching aid, such as flashcards and um, audiovisual devices, such as DVD player and uh, or a laptop, as the case may be. So first of all, ask your pupils to revise the letter names to you. Should be able to tell you this is letter A sound A, ah. letter B sounds B, letter C sounds K, letter D sounds D, letter E sounds A, letter F sounds Letter G sounds good. You take it back from there again. The, the G sounds good. They tell you that. The F sounds The E sounds A. The D sounds The D sounds D. The C sounds K. The B sounds B. And the A sounds A. So don't forget, we teach uppercase, okay, as the letter name and teach lowercase as the letter sound, sorry. We teach the lowercase as the letter sound, all right? That's for children of their age. So for this term, of course, before you commence the next lesson, a lot of rhymes. You need to make your class very lively for those children. That was why I made mention of the teaching aids you need, you know, to make this class happen initially. So, in the absence of audiovisual aid, at least you should be able to encourage the children by making them sing the different rhymes that might have been taught, you know, in the course of teaching them this lessons all right they are supposed to know rhymes like the a sounds ah the a sounds ah every letter makes a sound the a sounds ah they are supposed to also know the letter b sounds b b b b letter c sounds k k k cat that's it um uh, phonics and diction rhymes that we used to play for the learners when in class with them. Also, this particular class, um, the, the rhyme that they have in the textbook, you know, uh, the jolly phonics rhymes, okay, in most part of it, in most part of it. So, like the ah, ah, and some I am, ah, ah, and some I am. Ah, uh, ah, uh, and so my arm, they are causing me a lamp. So that's <clears throat> in that aspect, we're going to be singing this the ah uh, sound. Ah, uh, so you ask them, you can make use of this textbook, asking your pupils, children, what letter is this? They tell you letter A. Letter A sound, you keep quiet, let them make the ah uh, sound. Ah, uh, so after they have made the ah uh, sound, then you point out, ah uh, as in apple ant, ah uh, as in apple ant, okay? Letter B sounds B, B as in baby boy. Letter C sounds K, K as in cutie cat. Letter D sounds D, D as in darling daddy. Letter R e sounds A. A as in eggy elbow, letter F sounds as in floating fish, letter G sounds good, good as in good girl, letter H sounds, so yes, that the letter H is where we are going to 
continue this term okay as the same age of those rhymes they are supposed to be demonstrating all of this makes it jolly phonics for them it makes it fun they are they are learning yet they are playing they are playing yet they are learning so for this term the next lesson is to teach them uh, identification of letter sound <sighs> identification of letter sound <sighs> as it says it is a letter sound a letter sound all right so we we'll move on uh, to the page where we have the lesson okay uh, lesson nine a phonics identification of letter sound <sighs> so to begin you ask your pupils children you write this on the board or show them in the textbook children what letter is this if you have your flashcard perfect show it to them they learn fast and you know using the flashcard especially given the flashy colors they have been designed with so letter a sounds <sighs> as in if they're able to tell you fine if they are unable then you know you can tell them not to worry you're going to tell them before you go into the example let us uh, sing the rhyme I like to hop, 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 up and down. I like to hop, hop, hop all around. I like to hop, hop, hop up and down. <sighs> so after singing that, in fact, I love to teach teach my pupils, those children in this particular class, this rhyme, because as I'm singing to them, I'm demonstrating, I'm hopping, I turn around, you know, I, I hop up and down and all of this, okay? So at the end of the day, you see the joy in those children, you see the joy of learning in them, okay? So if the teacher is not lively, if you're not demonstrating what you're teaching to them, you may not get their 100% uh, attention. So the more action you put into it, the more response you get from your learners, from your pupils, all right? So after singing the rhyme, then you come letter eight sounds, <sighs> as in hopping horse. If you can tell them a short story, fine. But at this level, it's not really necessary given their short attention span, okay? So after saying the hopping horse, you show them the picture, like, okay, have they ever seen a horse moving in this manner before? Indeed, the horse is in a hopping position, right? Despite there is a rider on it. Yes, in fact, horses go hopping, especially when they are being rode on. Okay, so next is to ask your pupils to say, trace, and write the letters sound from the beginning to the end. In their previous class, it was just uh, uh, a business of tracing the deed. So here again, they will only do it once, at least to get back on track of how to sketch out that particular letter, you know, sound they've been saying from the beginning of this page not to forget you teacher you know when it comes to the time for class work like this you ought to have prepared your people's textbook writing today's date the day you're taking them the lesson write the dates write the class work okay mind you we assign this particular page as homework you see example of this in the term one that our pay setters have administered with your learners before so we don't really teach them this part in the classroom rather we give it to them as homework because at least plus or minus anybody they can learn to do this okay on their own but in case you have two topics to be taught at once then you treat a page in class and you allow them to take the next page home just see the previous lesson and see how we administered the lesson therein okay so this part anybody can guide them to treat it at home 
all right but this we given the little or no knowledge of phonics by majority of the parents out there we decide to ensure we treat those aspects of the lesson with our learners in school so usually we begin our classwork from here so before you you ask them to begin to write you have to take them through the sound blend and pronounce um, practice in the classroom these are non-conventional words okay the the sound of the letter h the, the the common sound of the letter e the sound of letter h the common sound of letter a all right so you go ah, ah. it may be somehow because we are not used to this particular sound in this part of the world. Rather, it's even in areas we don't need them that you see people aspirating unnecessarily. It's called age factor. So we control our tongue, you know, not to make the sound where it is not available. But where you have it, you try your best to say it as easily as possible. So you demonstrate it. That's the sound of the letter H and the letter A sound A. Ah. So, ah, 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 ah. So the same act should be repeated from the beginning to the end. It's been repeated. Before you know it, those children I trust them, though they have even turned the whole thing, the whole classroom, you know, do, you doing this into a joke. Yes, it's normal. Let it happen that way. Just, if I mean, sooner or later, they remember doing all of this and it helps them to retain what you have taught them. So after the, you've taken them through all of this, you can see it's just two being repeated about five, four to five times. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, five times. So before you now ask them to write it, because it's incomplete for someone to be able to speak sound and not being able to write. That such literacy is not balanced, okay? We are doing a form of balanced literacy here, whereby we, we combine speaking, listening, reading, and writing all together. So when the writing takes place with all we've done from the beginning, then it's a balanced literacy at the end of the day. So you see the children through writing the uh, two-letter non-conventional word on each of the lines provided uh, on this page of the book. Then let us take note to ensure we guide those children through. Do not just leave them to go and write. They're still learning letter formation at their age, so we should ensure we guide them to form the letters correctly. All right, then after that, there's nothing much in but B, it's just a little more exercise. You want to see, yes, how smart they are, how, yes, you, we, we cannot just assume how the children should not see this and call it a horse. You ask them, what is this? They tell you, this is a table. Very good, you applaud them. Then you ask them again, is this a horse? expectedly they should say no then you ask them what is it again they tell you it's a table very good then you get them to fill in the gap to fill in those gaps you could call them ask and help them fill in the gap and if your pupils are set that could write themselves just write um the sentence on the board and um on the line you would have drawn to rewrite the answer to those two questions. And after that, you move on to etiquette, teaching them, you know, one of the challenges that children used to have 
is the challenge of getting the difference between right hand and left hand okay this picture in this picture the child is eaten with the left hand in this picture the child is eaten with his right oh, okay sorry yes all through all through all through we are showing this picture is showing the children yes to eat with the right hand this is right hand here right hand here right hand here so you call on each of them to show you the hand they eat with. Explain at first, eating with the right hand. Or at first, rather ask them, which of the hands of your hands do you eat with? You could ask them, children, how many hands do you have? Expectedly, they should tell you two. Okay, which are the two? Let's say right hand and left hand. Children, show me your right hand. Then they raise their right hand to show you. I'm sure at this point there will be confusion. You see those of them who will show you their left hand, while some will show you the right hand. Try to face the direction the children are facing you so that they won't, you know, if you face them while they are facing you the other way around, there will be confusion. So you take their uh, standing or sitting position and ask them. So in that case, you'll be backing them no problem all right you all raise your right hand and gradually you take it to your mouth you can even bring food to the class at this time it could be your own food if you are the type of teacher who takes food to school or you could do it just for this purpose on that very day you want to teach this lesson so eat for them with your right hand and let them see so children eat with your right hand ask them to bring out their food if the class will not get rowdy or you just demonstrate no food but just uh, perhaps a an empty um plate with spoon and ask them to carry the, their right hand to their mouth and each child does that and you're certain that it goes around them all before you end the lesson so when you uh, uh, do not end the lesson without telling them this, children, whenever you want to eat anything, eat with your right hand, not your left hand. If you still have the time, explain to them what we what the right hand is used for and what the left hand is used for. You can even ask them. You'll be surprised the responses you get. And with all of that, you can determine the level of your learners, how... Um, how conversant they are with their hands, okay? Here we said teacher, parent, or guardian should guide each child to eat with his or her right hand until it is gotten right. So on this note, do not end the lesson without taking the children through all. Uh, you taught them from the beginning to the end. Now, we are I'm supposed to talk about the learning objectives from the beginning, okay? Always begin with the end in mind. At the end of this lesson, the pupils should be able to, one, say, trace, and write the sound. Two, they should be able to make a simple sentence with a given word example, like where we said, this is a horse. This is a horse in the textbook, all right? Then um, three, they should be able to sing a rhyme with the sound I like to hop, the letter A sound, or the A sounds, and all of that. So the next one, the children should be able to sound, pronounce, and write the letter non-conventional words, as in the lesson at least, for that very moment. It's, it's expected that in other lessons you teach them for that very day, wherever you come across the sound, the uh, and ah, the and the air sound, call their attention to it and let them identify that in different lessons throughout that very day. I bet you you are going to get a better results than ever before. Five, they should be able to identify picture examples of sound words. That's where we ask them, is this, a ta uh, is this a horse? Where we have a table, and they must be able to tell you it's a table and not a horse. Lastly, they should be able to eat with their right hand 
you know, by differentiating it from the left hand. On those notes, we've come to the end of this lesson. You know, in 20 minutes, we do all of this, and uh, you know, it's supposed to be a 40 to 45 minutes class. While well, you use the rest 20 to 25 minutes to, you know, engage in your pupils in writing and marking the books before you call it a wrap for that very day's lesson. Thank you very much. Feel free to ask me questions on the Telegram platform. You know, I'll be ready to answer you any day, anytime. Have a nice teaching phonics and diction experience in your various classes. Thank you.